The operator moves to the rear of the car and opens the engine access panel. He uses his hand to grasp the flywheel shaft and slowly turns it a few times to start the engine. After making sure everything is in place, he gives the crank a harder, faster turn to initiate ignition. The engine starts to sputter and make noise. He returns to the front of the car and adjusts the control lever, perhaps the fuel or air mixture, to stabilize the engine's operation. As the engine continues to run, he listens carefully to its rhythm, making small adjustments to improve its stability at idle. He scans the exposed engine components to ensure everything is running smoothly. When he is satisfied with the performance, he returns to the rear and gently closes. As the engine runs, its characteristic mechanical rhythm becomes clear and steady, marking the successful start of the classic Renault. The steady rhythm of the engine echoed like the heartbeat of a classic machine, resonating through the metal frame and softly into the ground below. A thin wisp of smoke rose from the exhaust, curling into the morning air, carrying the distinctive scent of oil that evoked memories of a bygone industrial era. Eyes followed the movement of the vehicle, as if listening to an old story told through sound and vibration. In that moment, the Renault was no longer just a machine. It became a living symbol of mechanical craftsmanship and historical memory. The Hornsby Mammoth Recreation begins its operation by building up steam pressure in the boiler, emitting visible smoke from the chimney. Once steam pressure is sufficient, the operator engages the controls, activating the large flywheel and connecting rods. The engine powers the crawler tracks, allowing the machine to move steadily across the field. As it travels, the distinctive clanking of mechanical components and rhythmic puffs of steam are heard. The operator adjusts speed and direction using manual levers. The machine navigates over uneven terrain with ease, showcasing the crawler track's traction capabilities. During movement, various gears and linkages are in constant motion, translating steam power into mechanical force. Occasionally, the operator checks gauges and lubricates moving parts. The steam engine maintains a consistent pace, demonstrating the strength and reliability of this historical machinery. The sequence concludes with the engine slowing and coming to a controlled stop. The Frick steam engine starts and steadily pulls a heavy road grader over dirt. As it moves, the grader levels the ground, with the engine maintaining consistent traction and power throughout the grading process. After overhaul, the R2800 is prepared by checking oil and fuel systems. The engine is primed, then the starter engages to turn the crankshaft. Ignition is activated, and fuel flow begins. The engine smoothly accelerates to idle speed, with monitoring of gauges for temperature and pressure before full operation. The Rolls-Royce Eagle diesel engine starts by engaging the starter motor, followed by fuel injection initiation. Air intake opens, enabling combustion. The engine smoothly gains RPM until running independently, completing the startup sequence seen in autumn 2011. The Deutz MKH260 diesel engine starts by manually turning the flywheel to position the piston for optimal compression. Compressed air aids rotation, while fuel injection and ignition bring the engine to life. Lubrication and cooling systems activate to protect the engine during operation. The operator carefully monitors the process until the engine runs smoothly and steadily. The Fairbanks Morse 32D diesel engine starts by a worker using a heavy hand tool to turn the pistons. The pneumatic starting system then uses 250 PSI of compressed air to turn the crankshaft. As the piston compresses the air inside the cylinder, fuel is injected at high pressure and ignited by the heat of compression. The combustion provides energy to the pistons, keeping the engine running on a four-cylinder, two-stroke cycle.
The Caterpillar D337F diesel engine was cold, started after sitting idle for over 20 years. After removing the genset from an industrial building and bringing it home, the diesel fuel system was thoroughly cleaned and prepared over several days. Without using any ether, the engine was carefully cranked until it finally fired up, showing steady operation. Although the Kato 150 kilowatts generator was spinning alongside the engine, it was not yet connected to produce electricity. This successful cold start demonstrated the engine's condition and readiness for future testing and power generation. The driver accelerated the ATV and drove straight into the mud, the wheels spinning rapidly. As the ATV entered the thick terrain, the mud splashed while the suspension system absorbed the strong impact. After hitting the mud, the vehicle could no longer move forward, it was completely stuck in the mud, even if the driver accelerated until the engine smoked, the vehicle could not move forward. The startup process begins with reassembling the Guillé Log bandsaw after over 10 years of disuse. A 40 horsepower electric motor could not be used directly, so a custom angle drive was installed, using parts including a pulley from the original motor and a gearbox from a beet harvester. Due to alignment issues, the coupling had no flector, but the rotation worked. A 150 horsepower tractor powered the saw via a PTO shaft. A support frame and tension system were built. Upon activation, the bandsaw ran smoothly without vibration or noise, despite the heavy rotating mass. Final steps include fixing the carriage base and sharpening the blade. The engine is primed by manually turning the propeller to clear excess oil and ensure cylinder lubrication. The magneto switch is turned on and fuel is supplied. The operator engages the starter, causing the propeller to spin and pistons to move. After several rotations, ignition occurs as spark plugs fire in a specific sequence. Combustion stabilizes and the engine runs smoothly with a rhythmic sound. The operator monitors the exhaust and engine response adjusting throttle as needed to maintain consistent operation. The antique oil well pump jack is started by manually rotating the flywheel to initiate movement. As the flywheel turns, it drives the belt connected to the gearbox, which transfers power to the crank arms. These cranks move the walking beam up and down. The horse head at the front of the beam pulls the bridle and polished rod in a vertical motion. This motion operates the downhole pump, enabling fluid to be lifted from the well. The process continues automatically once the flywheel gains sufficient momentum, maintaining the pumping cycle. The 30 to 60 E Roomly oil pulls starting process begins with the operator checking and pouring kerosene into the engine. The operator then climbs onto the flywheel and uses his body weight to manually crank the engine. Once the flywheel gains momentum, the operator quickly returns to the cab to adjust the throttle, ensuring smooth engine operation. The engine runs on kerosene, so water injection is used to prevent premature ignition by cooling the combustion process. This sequence of hand cranking, immediate throttle adjustment, and water-assisted kerosene ignition illustrates the mechanical, hands-on nature of starting this classic tractor.
The engine is primed, fuel is delivered, and ignition is activated. The powerful 600-inch, 8-71 supercharged V8 roars to life on the dyno, producing thunderous revs as the throttle is gradually increased during warm-up. The startup process begins with the operator manually turning the large flywheel to initiate engine rotation. This action helps build initial momentum. Then, the fuel supply is engaged, allowing the carburetor to deliver the fuel-air mixture into the cylinders. The ignition system, powered by a magneto, produces sparks at the spark plugs in the correct firing order. As combustion starts within the cylinders, the pistons move, further accelerating the engine speed. The operator monitors oil pressure and engine sounds to ensure smooth running. Once the engine reaches optimal RPM, the cooling system circulates water around the cylinders to maintain temperature. Finally, the engine runs steadily, producing power through the crankshaft for its intended application. To start the 20,175 cubic inch single cylinder engine, compressed air is first introduced into the cylinder to move the piston and begin rotation. With the massive flywheel slowly gaining momentum, the operator adjusts fuel and ignition settings. Once the engine reaches sufficient speed, oil is injected and ignited to sustain combustion. The engine runs on a four-stroke cycle, with visible open crankcase components like the connecting rod and crankshaft moving rhythmically. As it operates at about 160 RPM, the massive dual 9-foot flywheels maintain rotational stability and the open mechanisms are continuously lubricated by hand using oil cans. The rhythmic firing of the single cylinder delivers a deep, powerful exhaust sound and each power stroke drives the 40-ton machine with immense torque. Operators monitor its performance closely, ensuring proper lubrication and alignment as the engine runs smoothly and steadily. Ned and Dave clean the foundation to prepare for placing the 22-ton Fairbanks Morse 32E diesel engine. Meanwhile, George booms up the crane to bring the engine's weight closer in, increasing stability. With the crane holding the engine, the team carefully aligns it with the six mounting bolts protruding from the foundation. Coordination with George is critical at this stage. As the engine is lowered, the process demands complete accuracy to match the engine's base with the bolt pattern. The team constantly checks alignment from all sides, making fine adjustments until the engine settles perfectly into place. The move requires total precision and teamwork throughout. The startup process of the Fairbanks Morse 32E14 begins by rotating the engine manually to ensure all components move freely. Lubrication is verified and oil levels are checked. Compressed air at 250 psi is then supplied to the air start system. With air injected into the cylinders, the flywheel begins turning the crankshaft. As the engine rotates, fuel is injected at 2000 psi into the compressed air inside the cylinders. The heat from the compressed air ignites the fuel, initiating combustion. Once firing occurs in multiple cylinders, the air supply is cut, and the engine continues running on its own power. The exhaust gases exit through uncovered ports as the piston descends. During the process, operators monitor pressure gauges and listen for proper combustion sounds. 
After successful ignition, the engine stabilizes at operating speed, around 300 revolutions per minute. The massive flywheel maintains momentum, enabling the two-stroke diesel to run smoothly. The Rolls-Royce diesel C8 TFL is test run while mounted on a stand. First, the engine is cranked and started, producing a deep, rhythmic idle. Mechanics monitor its operation and check for vibrations or anomalies. The engine is gradually revved up, demonstrating its turbocharged response and stability under higher RPMs. Exhaust emissions and sound are observed to assess combustion performance the 16.2-liter straight minus eight locomotive engine runs smoothly at various speeds before being shut down after the successful test, confirming its 265 kilowatts output readiness. The starting procedure of the Bristol Hercules engine a renowned 14-cylinder sleeve valve aircraft engine is a complex process that requires precise coordination among technicians. First, the engine must be primed manually by pumping fuel into the cylinders using a priming lever. At the same time, the propeller is gently turned by hand to ensure smooth movement of internal components and proper distribution of oil throughout the engine. Once the preparations are complete, an external electric starter is activated to crank the engine. The cylinders begin to fire in sequence, producing a distinctive sound along with puffs of smoke from the exhaust, signs that the machine is coming back to life after a long silence. The engine's fuel and ignition systems are designed to deliver a large volume of combustible mixture in a short period, meeting the demands of continuous high power output. The exhaust pipes are not equipped with mufflers or shielding, allowing exhaust gases to be released directly at high pressure. This results in prominent flame bursts, a typical characteristic of engines not constrained by civilian emission standards. The starting and control mechanisms are mounted on the side of the engine and connected via cables to an auxiliary system, which could be a generator or an independent starter unit. The engine is securely mounted on a steel frame with movable wheels, enabling flexible deployment in test environments. This configuration also allows for easy monitoring and access to key subsystems such as the cooling system, oil supply, and pressure measurement during real-time operation. The engine produces an overwhelming sense of raw mechanical power, both visually and audibly. The sight of flames shooting from the exhausts, combined with the thunderous roar, evokes a primal appreciation for engineering at its most unrestrained. It serves as a vivid reminder of an era when performance was prioritized above all else, unfiltered by modern limitations. The bulldozer approaches the ATV and slowly drives over it. Its heavy tracks first crush the front section, then the middle, flattening the frame completely. As the machine continues, the rear wheels and body collapse under the pressure. Finally, the ATV is left mangled and destroyed beneath the dozer's weight.